Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, September 14th meeting for the Norwood Cultural Council. We are happy to work through tonight's agenda and talk about the upcoming grant cycle and um, a little bit look past at some other events. Um, there's someone who has a little bit of feedback. I'm not sure. Maybe we should mute ourselves. Um, and we'll just move through, start moving through the agenda. Unless, does anybody have anything off the bat that they wanted to um, add at the moment? Nope. Okay. So um, the treasurer's report is usually what we go over first, but Shalon Sparrow couldn't make it tonight. And I think that where things stand, I haven't seen anything come through our email that um, Im implies that much has changed since the last time we talked. I will say that there was some back and forth with the town about figuring out how we can do electronic donations for um, fundraisers during this time. We had asked about it uh, for the kite event that we did and we couldn't figure it out in time. But I think what needs to happen, Timothea from the Mass Cultural Council sent me an example of a town who did something similar for, for a recent event. And what I need to do, what we need to do now is just follow up with Mark Good at the town's accountant's office and show him um, how it kind of works. And this will just enable us during this time to allow people to have an easier way to donate to us if in lieu of like a tip jar um, when we might have seen each other face to face. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, Mark actually reached out to Timothea because he wasn't sure if like this is something LCCs should be doing. And so um, I'm glad that she was able to say, you know, absolutely they can fundraise. And um, just the side note to that is that, you know, with the, with COVID and the state budget, we may need to be thinking more and more seriously about it, it's depending upon what we wanted to try and do. Um, so the next thing on the item is the, uh, or on the agenda, sorry, is the, the grants um, cycle information. And Amy and I talked last week, hold on one second. My door was open and I just heard the kids come back. Um, so we talked about doing what we're going to do in lieu of that sort of workshop that we wanted to do. And um, I want to share with you guys my screen about a Google Doc that I've just started to put together of like tasks that we need to do and then have you guys sort of fill in um, if there's anything missing or if we, you know, what that's going to look like. So hold on one sec and I will share that with you. Can you guys see that? All right, now I have to see it. Okay, so the first part of the timeline is was just straight from Timothea um, for the new schedule for 20, 2021. Um, and as you can see, everything's pushed back. So the, arc, the grand cycle begins, it opens up on the first, closes on the 16th, and we'll be reviewing things as mid, starting in mid-November. And what I wanted, to, hopefully we can talk about this tonight, like when we, given that that's like holiday time, like how we want to handle that, like the, those voting meetings, a little bit of uncharted territory. So down here, um, the things, and Amy, you can speak to this too, but what we wanted to do was do kind of two types of outreach, like create something we can post to let Norwood cultural organizations know about the grant cycle as well as something like a letter that we can send to the organizations we do know um, and to the enrichment coordinators, et cetera. And um, basically what's gonna go in it is an overview of what we are based and sort of what the grant cycle looks like during these times that we don't really know what the budget's gonna be, but what our priorities are and um, that programming obviously should be positive, a positive virtual experience or like a public art, something that can be experienced at a distance, something that, you know, is safe. Um, so at Amy already started putting together some helpful slides on like how to navigate the 
Cultural Council, the MCC application process. So we'll just give some some sh and Timothy actually said she has something around that too. So she's going to send that to us. We'll be able to steer them toward that piece of it. But also we want to incorporate um, the information from above. And then I think that that's essentially it, unless you guys have other thoughts. Originally, um, sorry, I'll go back to this. So Monday the 28th, which is the beginning of the week that the cycle launches we would be able to share that um i just lost my train of thought but amy did you have anything to add or questions or anything no i think you pretty much summed it up i did sign up for um the whatever's on the the cultural council meeting like you know from mass cultural council on the 24th because i oh, think over the like it goes over all the grant cycle and all that stuff so i thought that would be helpful to pull whatever information i get gather from there into those slides or whatever else timothea has for us so if you uh, have what she has and can send that to me i can try to you know maneuver that and make some type of slideshow thing if you want she actually let, you know pointed me to that same date so I don't have it yet, but she was like, we're going to have this on this date. So I figured, oh, well, great. We'll just have like our stuff built in and then we can sort of fold whatever they have to the slides okay. and then share it out. Um, okay. I think separately um, from this would be a piece that like a letter similar to what we did for Art Week that is just to the different organizations that could link to this slideshow, but also just says, you know, just is like a um, all points bulletin, like this is happening if your organization or your contacts, because we want to sort of spread the word as widely as possible to a point, you know, I think we talked about this last meeting that we're trying to get our um, net cast a little more broadly than just schools, but, um, a part of that is just, you know, would it, it would have been great to start building that relationship with Art Week and, and that sort of thing, but here we are. So we'll use that list. If you guys can think of anything else, um, or like, I was thinking one thing I could do in the next couple of days is just make, oh, I just, I had a pen shoot across the room. Sorry. Um, is make a, that list of those organizations and share it. You guys all have Gmail, right? So I could do the, Google share and then have you guys add anything that I might be forgetting as well as um, if you have a contact there. So I thought we could do that that way. Is there anything else that you guys can think of like in terms of getting the word out about the grant cycle or stuff we definitely want to have in this shared information? So okay, this is instead of a scheduled quote unquote training date, right? Right. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah, okay, so then Amy and I were talking about should we hold a live workshop? And I personally feel like we could go either way, but I'm not sure it's the best use of time for people in these times. And Amy kind of felt like the same, right? Like that people might, um, you know, what we can do is say like, here's our email, here's our, you know, reach out you know it, and also i think amy felt like and i understand this like we're in a position where it's such it's so unprecedented that in the moment we might not have the answer so we might need to to get back to them anyway yeah especially that that's what i had said to kate on the phone a few weeks ago only because I, because i'm so new to this i don't want to go live with something and then have to say it every time somebody asks a question well, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. So this way I can actually do some research and kind of eat, if I need to reach out to Timothea to find out some information, um, especially where a lot of these programs might be ha ha might have to go virtual or and how are they going to go about that or, you know, outside. I don't know. So it, it just I just didn't want to I didn't want to waste people's time nor my own and not have an answer for someone. So at least this way, if we, like Kate said, if we can, you know, put an email out there like for the cultural council and have the people send the questions in. And if I can't answer it or 
if any of you can answer it, that would be great. And then we can, you know, follow up with that. Um, so that's it. I think that sounds good. And it's a good question though, Deborah, because like one of the reasons we wanted to have the workshops was to start building those relationships and all of that. So part of me was thinking, oh, well, let's hold something live because then it puts us more presence of mind. But I just think for everything that Amy said and because of everyone's state of mind, it probably makes more sense to just give the information at this point. Is that good with everybody? Uh, great. Um, is anybody looking at the agenda so I don't have to move my screen 14 times? What's next? Or what am I missing? <laughs> I didn't print it out. It's so the 150th update, Kate. That's the next thing on the agenda. Okay, cool. So Denise has a little bit of info, and so do I. Um, the Denise has been talking to Tom Maloney, who was voted the chair of the committee at, at the last meeting. So I think that that we had the last official or the first official kickoff meeting last couple of weeks ago, and Denise and I are gonna, you know, piggyback that role representing the council. Basically, the highlights are, for the most part, there. It's going to be structured like an executive um, board or whatever that will then overlook um, with all the different subcommittees. So there will be a marketing subcommittee. There will be a, a merchandise subcommittee. There will be a cultural subcommittee. There will be a sports and rec, a fundraising, etc. So it was very um, generally stated that that our role would be to sort of umbrella all the cultural organizations. And so I think essentially how that's gonna look is there's gonna be a big communication that goes out that's like our 150th is coming up. If you wanna do something with your organization, get on the calendar now because people are gonna start filling it up with events. So we'll say, you know, do that and then on the side, and we didn't talk about this as much uh, at the last meeting, is there will be some projects that we might be more involved with as a council. And we've talked, to, we as a group have talked about this it, it, for a little while, but that we might collaborate with other councils or organizations or associations to do sort of a collaborative project. One of which um, Denise has a little bit like of an idea for, which is some live theater. Yeah, so as part of Backstage Boosters, along with Dean Collusion, who does um, Fantasy Footsteps for us and um, also helps us with um, the character breakfast, he is going to use historical information. Um, and we have, we're have we not 100% sure yet, but we're going to either have like a high school student do it or have like a contest with an English teacher kind of thing and have someone using like historical dates in Norwood write a little screenplay or a little play and then we're going to use have kids from Norwood audition and do sort of like a you know a, a timeline sort of play at some point uh, during the 150th. Great that sounds cool I would say that if any of you guys have any other ideas that you want us to um, certainly we can make a subcommittee and like initiate that in the community and start talking about that but if you want us to represent that idea at the meeting Denise or I let us, you know, we can either talk about it now or, or we can talk about it at the meeting or you, you can send us that information and we could bring it up to the larger group. Or, you know, if you think, you know, we should do something with the evening gardening, gardening club or whatever it is. Um, I just want you guys to know that all ideas are welcome and we should start those conversations anytime. Um, at some point, I can share with you a timeline too of what that looks like. But basically there's these pillar events, um, you know, like a gala and a holiday thing and 4th of July parade and sort of these big, with the exception of the gala, things that kind of happen anyway, but they're gonna have a big 150th celebration theme. or stamp on them, theme on them. Um, but then, you know, there will be things that come, you know, there's interest in doing an international festival, there's interest in doing some public art, there's interest, you know, there's, a, you know, programming for younger kids, programming for younger families, programming for seniors, so any ideas are good to know. 
Um, hey, can I, about yeah, I have a question. So you mentioned that like as a whole, like we'll do the umbrella for all the cultural, like all the cultural events. Um, but you mentioned that there's going to be like a marketing and a merchandising thing. Are we, as the cultural council, are we able to make it sort of a fundraiser for us too, to collect money like during the 150th or just the cultural council or is that not an option? So each event you can that you can collect money at your event that you sponsor and you can okay. certainly um, use that as your fundraiser but I think the separate merchandising and that kind of thing is going to go back to the 150 from what yeah. I understand from the meeting I yeah, went to. Yeah th I guess that's what I was asking if we like when you're talking about the backstage boosters and, and doing this timeline play is that something as a cultural council can we collect money from that and have it go directly back into the cultural council or does that have to go to the broader well, spectrum of everything. So, so that event that I'm talking about is sponsored by Backstage Boosters, which has really nothing to do with cultural council. It's just a, it's a cultural event. Okay. So that would go back to Backstage Boosters if there was a, if they if they did you know tickets at the door or whatever. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So we have to do our own event. Like think of like like we did the kites or like you know yeah. we wanted to do our photo contest. Like we would have to do our okay. own 150th inspired event. And then you could take the proceeds for that. And then I think like the merchandise, it's going to pay for things like, um, I, well, there'll be tickets for the gala, but all that. There's going to be signage. There's all kinds of stuff that's going out that yeah. you know, just kind of, kind of advertise it and celebrate us. You'll start to see banners and that kind of thing. And I think that's where the money's going to go. Okay. Does it make sense for us as a group to try to find something so that we can collect money into like our kitty for the cultural council? Sure. Yeah. I mean, what I think, um, like one thing that might, yes, yes. It makes sense for us to try to do something. I think that what we're going to be, our strength is probably going to be collaborating with others though. So we'd okay. have to like, think about like, remember, I don't know if at one point for art week before we decided it was too fast, Karate had had the idea of doing a um, like a on the common art festival. So like we could host something like that where we invite art organizations to come do interactive art and put up our table and have our donation information for sure, I think, because we would host it and coordinate it and put up the tables and all of that. Okay. Something like that. I mean, or we could do something smaller that was like, like the kite event. But I just think like we're we're the we're sort of the megaphone, right, for okay. the community. Yep. But that's not a final answer. I mean, like if if there's an idea that's, you know, another thing could be that was also an Art Week idea. Um, like Little Bird, we were gonna do a host like a happy hour thing. Yeah, it was gonna have like pizzas and beers and a like a art show of those artists. So, like again, like we'd sort of be a collaborator, but um, and and you know other people might want to fundraise, but we could if we help coordinate it, we could get our name out there and and do that. Um, it's good to be thinking about these things though. Um, okay, so anything else for the 150th, Denise? I don't think so, right? We have a meeting on the 24th next. So, okay, so the next, oh, I wanted to just, is it up to the kites yet? So that went really well. We got 96 kites claimed, or not claimed, but reserved. And of those, um, only there was like 15 or 20 that were not picked up and I don't know how many families that was but um, we left them there for a couple of days but I think that's still a really good number we didn't get a lot of posts on social media but I think again it just speaks to our time also we didn't have a huge run up to like all you know, beforehand in the in the media but the fact that like they all got reserved was was a great thing I think and also showed that like people are hungry for that sort of thing 
Uh, is it worth it for me to reach out to those two neighbors I was telling you about to post something or is it that window passed? I don't know. I was thinking the same thing because I had two friends that posted on their private page and I was like, mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, you got to put it on the right page. Yeah. Yeah. And I probably just buried it in the, the paper or something, but, um, probably too late. I don't know. Um, what we might be able to do is like post it to our page and say like, we had so much fun with this. So if you, um, Facebook friends with them, I'll ask them for photos. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it can hurt. We could do like a, a little bit of a um, and just do a statement like this was great. Thank you to the library. And then what, what about sending back an email? We have contact information for everyone that picked up a kite or that ordered a kite. Yeah. What about sending an email to them and saying, hey, you know, we're so glad you did this. We'd love to see how it came out share share pictures with us you know that kind of thing and see if we can get we can drum it up that way yeah kate kate would be i think she'd be more than willing to email them because i asked her to that day and when she did a reminder and i was like say don't forget to post you know so i'll yeah we can ask kate at the library no even just ask them to share pictures to us and then us we can ask if it's okay to share them, you know, like get permission to share them. Cause you know, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they don't want to do that or maybe they're not that savvy or maybe they're just busy. Yeah. But if they were willing to email them to us, we could do something with it. Yep. Okay. Cause I know the kite company was hoping that we'd send some back to, to them just for okay. them. To okay. So, um, Photo contest was our thunder was stolen <laughs> officially. Um, coincidentally, I'm assuming, although I think it's a pretty common fundraiser idea, like calendars. So it's not that like crazy that it would happen. It's just the timing was unfortunate. Um, well, I mentioned Kate. I don't know if anyone remembers Calendar Girls, the movie. I think we could certainly certainly raise some funds get all the firefighters and exactly <laughs> right <laughs> plenty of calendars you know to be had <laughs> calendar ideas um so i guess like we didn't have you know I'm, I'm sort of like we can focus on the grand cycle now and people are so focused on back to schools that i think it's okay that we're not it's going to be fine but in terms of um, other ideas to, to do something similar where we drop the public, general public's creativity in, that's what was great about it. The fact that we were going to draw in some local artists or um, you know, public servants, that was also a cool thing about it. So if we can think about maybe for the spring, something like that, um, I know we don't know what the spring will be like, but um, it's, it's so hard. Every time thing I think about sort of brings a crowd together, which kind of, you know, that's just not something we can do right now. Right. So I, I think we should like, I love the idea of porch fest and I think we could, we could definitely do something like that, but there's no, there, it would be impossible to be able to not have a crowd. Yeah. I mean, porch fest that I've been to, it's not usually a big crowd, but it's, there's definitely no way to, to yeah. control right. it. Right. Right. I'm going to write it down, though, because say, you know, in spring, it might be more feasible. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, like, the high school tried this a few years ago, but they, it wasn't exactly successful, but I think it was more execution than the idea, but it would be fun along with the historical society, knowing that there's like stories of all these different houses, um, to do like the idea of like the, like an enchanted walk, like where you pick like, I don't know, 10 houses from, you know, the ones on, um, uh, know where the Homewoods live. I can't, why can't I think of the name of the street? Anyhow, there's a bunch of historical homes and find out like some of the background and then sort of tell the story and have like that, is sort of sort of like historical home walk you could even do it yeah. like for halloween and make it ghostly um yeah, and kind of scary 
you know, like this, these are the ghosts that live here kind of thing. And that could be very fun. But again, it's really hard to socially distance people and do that both for like I, someone who would be a narrator or a tour guide or yeah. whatever. I mean, you could do like a, self, a self guided tour, like where we do something with, um, what are those, what are those dots called? You know, when someone hits it with their iPhone, the little squares. Yeah. Yeah. On the idea of like a barcode and then us like have it like a pre recorded story of the home, like go to this home, you know, you put your iPhone on it and then it tells you the story of the home. Yep. Um, I don't know if that gets us anything, but you know, it would be a cool thing to do. And I, there's like a lot of really cool houses around that have really great stories. I, I wonder if we could combine that with Mary Paz's idea of something with StoryCorps. That way it could move beyond just like houses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like if somebody had a really good story about one of the parks or something, or you know, where, you know, really just get the old timers to like tell weird stories about the town. I think that could that could be really fun for people. I, I would love to know more about that, about that kind of stuff. I agree. Yeah, and that seems like a good um, collaboration with the um, historical, historical society and the senior uh, center. Yeah. So, so, so the historical society did do like a walking tour, and there's an historian that had had done a lot of. Um, uh, like research and knows the background of a lot of homes. And the only reason I know is because my parents own an historical home and like the tour would come up and they'd walk like right in the front hall of this house and he'd show them all the woodwork and talk about like what's unique about the house and who lived there. And then they go. And, and so the work is already partly done. So it's just a combination yeah. of maybe finding someone like, you know, a living, breathing human being to tell more stories about the building. You know, like there's a house on ever that on Hoyle Street that's like a castle, and that's yeah. the guy. The, the guy, like, basically built it to be his castle. Had this giant like party to to like open it up after years and years of building it, and like dropped dead the the next day, like after the party. It was like the what? tragedy of the story kind of thing. Um, I wonder if NCM would want to collaborate too, and like we could just we could you know broadcast. We could yeah. have an historian speaking to those. That's and then you know share it out i do know that the i've heard buzz about like something haunted -y for the 150th with the historical possibly like rumblings um nothing official but i think that's on people's minds i i think by the 150th though the idea is like you the hope is that you know covid won't be as much of an issue and you could get on a trolley and you could do something like that um but maybe we could um offer it you know in a way that's like virtual yeah. but also not the haunted thing and you know if that's gonna i don't know we could even do like a lights contest kind of thing and have it be like a walking tour or a trolley tour to go around and you know you could well, do something like that it's a huge thing i mean like i know there are women in norwood that like get a bus and like drive through different neighborhoods all the way to boston and look at lights and it's like a big deal night and, and every time they do the bus it sells out oh so we could do something like that on the idea of in norwood but involve the public and say yes have you decorate so your house yeah do your display now are you thinking like fall or holiday like christmas i'm thinking holiday i was thinking holidays i mean that's like when you kind of think of lights but yeah um you know because that's it would be a nighttime thing. I mean, you could always do like gardens of Norwood, that kind of thing, like the hidden gardens of Norwood. A lot of like beautiful gardens in Norwood, but it, and it's like sort of a self. You could do a self-guided walking tour on one particular day, with you know tickets or whatever, which might keep it um, distanced. And when is the best time to do that? Though would would then have to have enough time to coordinate it. It would be just to. Um, aim yeah, like I think my my garden's like peak in July, like so like yeah. the second week of July. I'm thinking about the um the light contest and, and it's given what happened with the photo contest. I'm wondering if we want to stake put this, a stake to the ground now. Yeah, nail this down a little bit more and make a decision and get it publicized. Um would 
could make it really fun and do like horse drawn hay rides around to the see the lights. You know, like they do yeah. around around the center of Norwood when you know when they when we do Norwood Day, how there's the horse drawn carriage. Let me ask this: What's a way you could do it that would like a challenge that could where it would not make it super expensive? Like it's not necessarily like like you're gonna have the blowout category, right? You know, the mm -hmm. people that sort of do the most, but like how could people get involved without having to like you know invest? Two hundred fifty dollars, you know, or whatever it is in lights, but you know, you could say like most creative or most. I don't know. You could have a bunch of categories, just like we did with photographs. You could have it, you know, um, patriotic. I don't know. Um, yeah. You could have it like all one color, or you know, encompasses many cultures, or or you know, a different culture. Yeah. That'd be good. Um, should we sort of have a subcommittee meeting about this, or do you want to keep talking about it? Let's uh, let's. Do you want to table it and get through the rest of the agenda and then see where time is, and then we can decide if we want to. Yeah, I mean that may not be the best idea. That's just a thought. Okay. All right. What's next on the agenda? Let's see. So Wait, I'm still thinking about this I, the story core idea here. I really, <laughs> I really think there's a missed potential here, especially with the the historical society. I was just yeah. I was trying to find this story that I was that I remembered from because the Norwood Historical Society has been doing these great this day in Norwood history things. Have you yep. seen? Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're they're wonderful. Um, but I wonder if there was a way to like make like placards of these things, right? Like. So I, you know, I, I live on, I live on Chapel Street and there was one where like, you know, there was a plane crash like in the playground behind my house. Like this is, this is wild stuff, you know, and it was in 1944. There's the odds, it's possible somebody is still alive who like knows these stories who could like tell, you know, I, yeah. I, I think we're, I think there's really something to be done here. I don't know. We don't have to talk about it much longer, but I just, I, I wanted to no, announce. We could, talk about we, could, it. we could call it Notably Norwood. Notably Norwood, yeah. Yeah, I, and we're done. I I didn't realize. I mean, unless I was the next up is addendum and talking about our meeting date. So, um, I, I, don't, oh, I, I, mean, I don't have I don't have much I don't have any concrete plans here, but I I think that this is a neat. I think there's a neat potential there because it's free, right? Yeah. I'm gonna do this to people and record right. it. Um. I mean, maybe if there was like the making of placards, maybe that would be a little, you know, there's a cost there, but I, I Well, don't I know. think we could collaborate. We could ask, check in with the historical society. They would probably have a great idea as like the how, and then yeah. we can help with the, you know, the sort of the, the how to elevate it and get the word out and maybe get NCM involved or like um, right. sort of the levels of it. Or we could brainstorm on that. But before we, we're at the end of the agenda, but I did want to just look at that timeline one more time, if you guys don't mind, um, because I want to get your thoughts on, are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. can, you, can you mute your microphone, William, please? Thanks. Okay. So, Thoughts on this, our, our granting meetings being in mid-November um, to January. Are we thinking early, like, to aim for early December and just knock it out? If And then, what does this say between, and oh, does that mean we have Sometimes three? We're going to get the panel book because it's usually a lot to review. Right, and we don't That's get the panel book until mid between November 18th and December 1st. So we could possibly have one in early to mid December. I know we need some time with the books, but before, I don't think we wanna go into like mid December, right? Like we're all, I know I'm usually 
pretty preoccupied. And then, does, do you guys take this to mean that, but it says between November and January 21st that we have all of January? If that's the case, I feel better about it. Well, when is all our budget stuff and forms due back to MCC? It says that the final report is due February 16th, that the um, parts one and two of the annual report are due October 31st, but that's just kind of like a reconciliation of 2020, I believe. Does that answer your question? I don't know if I have any answers beyond that, but it looks like February 16th, the annual report is due. So we'd have to, oh, I see you're saying like, so you think we have until February, until that date. That's what I was thinking, but I could be wrong. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so maybe it's not as pressing as I was worried about. Okay, um, we don't have to set it today then. We'll, uh, we can do it as we are seeing things more closely and clearly. Never mind. <laughs> um, any, okay, so StoryCorps and what was the other thing? The lights tour. We it's seven fifty two. Um, do you want to keep going until eight thirty and talk about these ideas, or does anyone do, do it? Should we set up a like a sort of a event? subcommittee and, and have a more of a conversation there. How do you guys feel about it? I'm good either way. Subcommittee is probably a fine idea. I've, I've been on video calls for like five hours today, so. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah subcommittee would be nice. Would Fair get enough. Time to think and. Perfect. Yeah. You're saying you agree, Karate? Yeah, uh, subcommittee would be great. Like uh, we get some more time to think on some new ideas we can just add to yeah. something like that makes sense okay um so then there's no rush on this who wants to sort of be involved in that just i can i can coordinate it okay chris great rati denise perfect all right cool um so i'll just follow up by email then and I think we're good. Does anybody else have anything? Thank you all so much. Feel free to send your photographs to Friends of Norwood Center. <laughs> I'm sure there's like a, plenty of good ones. Um, and Amy and I will be, we can share the um, slide content maybe by email and then see if anybody else has input too. And then look to have that finalized by that first, that, September 28th, 25th time. Uh, okay. Do you want me to wait though until that meeting the, on the 24th and then add some other things and then I'll send it out to everybody? Because all, all I honestly, all yeah. I did was I took stuff from the Mass Cultural Council website and just cut and paste and put them on that slide. Yes, that makes sense. Yes. We'll, we share it with this group on the 25th and I will, Amy, I'll go in and add like the mission stuff. It, it, okay. If you because if that helps yeah and, uh, yeah that, that would be good okay cool thanks everyone thanks, thanks everyone Have a great day. bye take care bye guys